Romance, fortune, nobility, desire, power, warnings. We're not talking soft-hearted pinks today because red is the color of passion. Not just when it comes to love, but power, prestige, and danger. Whichever it signifies, red does it fiercely and without apology. And that's not surprising. Red is the second most visible color to human eyes. Only yellow can draw us in faster. This might play into why plants and animals use red as a warning. A clearly visible, do not mess with me, neon sign. Yeah, like that one. Creatures like the venomous coral snake and plants like polyberries, which are poisonous, show these bright, vivid red colors uh, to warn people and other creatures away. Even in weather lore, who knew that was a thing, red serves as a warning. Like in the old saying, red sky at night, sailors delight. Red sky come morning, sailors take warning. And to sailors and fishermen, it meant that a red sunset would bring good weather. And so it was a good omen. But a red sunrise was a harbinger of foul weather. And this actually has some truth to it, believe it or not, like I found out in this Everyday Mysteries article. It was really interesting because it has to do with the, the frequency of the color red and how it hits the atmosphere and when this comes up with storm patterns. So if you want to know more about that, you should check it out in the link below because it was actually really interesting. And who would dream of ignoring the romance of red, especially this close to Valentine's Day? Red roses are a sign of romantic love for that one and only special someone. Instead of the softer feelings carried by the pink rose, you would give a close friend or even your grandmother. And a red dress says a lot more than Be My Valentine. It hints at fire and appeals to human desire. With all of this symbolism packed into one color, red at first appears to have a split personality, but I don't think that's true. Like everyone, it has its moods and frames of mind, but what ties it all together isn't what it means in each situation. Love or fury, warning or seduction. It's how passionately it means it. Red is not an accidental color. You don't just slap it onto a canvas as a throwaway. You mean it. Even here in Dolly's, Jesus is tempted by Satan with red everywhere like he just flung a paint can about, you can still tell it's not on accident. Dolly wants that red there, and oh, it, it just adds to, to your understanding of what the painting is about, how Jesus is being tempted by Satan to, to go against himself. And people have meant it for a long time. Red is actually one of the first colors man ever used. They found red ochre paints uh, with pigments made from red clay in Paleolithic cave paintings. Oh my gosh, it's insane. It's, it's wonderful. You could say it's the first color man ever used because if you look at these cave paintings, the only other pigments they use is black and white, making red the first like actual color to be painted with. Classical Greek pottery, known for its black-figured paintings and its red-figured paintings, uh, are still tied together by the red of the clay that they used to make their pottery. They did have glazes and paints, including red ones, but they've largely faded over time, leaving us with the red of the pots. You could say it was baked right in. <laughs> this is also that red ochre kind of color, and ochres are more natural and uh, have more earthy tones to it. So that's why these are like rusty kind of reds. They look very much like the clay they're made of. Artists wanted something more. And the conquistadors found it here, in Central and South America, in the form of a tiny little cactus-loving bug called the cochineal that was squashed full with this vibrant red color. The Aztecs used to use it to dye their clothes. And pretty soon, the Spaniards began to ship it back to the Old World to do the same. Dyers and painters loved this new pigment that they called carmine because it was so much more vivid than the variant they had before, made out of a different little insect called a kern. 
demand exploded. Everyone wanted this color, and it became the third largest import behind gold and silver. That's a lot of bugs! And the fact that they were bugs was a closely guarded trade secret because the conquistadors did not want anyone else gathering their own source. And so when they shipped these little dried bugs back, people were looking at these pellets and going, is this an animal, a vegetable, or a mineral? They had no idea. <laughs> Mostly people didn't care what it was as long as they got some of that sweet, sweet carmine color. The cochineal dye was pricey, keeping most people from trailing their sleeves through it, so to say. For the nobility, red quickly became chic, and they used it to color clothes, rugs, and in a style set by King Louis XIV, their heels. Thanks, Louis. Japanese culture took it one step farther, forbidding merchants and peasants from wearing red at all. Only the nobility could, legally. Lower classes would dye the insides of their kimonos red, or other clothes that they wore underneath, where other people couldn't see, like their underwear. And what's even more astounding is that the cochineal is still used today in natural dyes. Even food coloring, which I, I know you totally needed to know that, but don't worry, it is natural and harmless. And it might even be in my favorite red lipstick. There are even people in Peru who still use it to color their fabrics and their yarns, and they get this, oh, this wonderful range of color spreading from fuchsia to just this, this vivid scarlet color. It's so beautiful. The artist Jacobo Robusti, better known by his boyhood name Tintoretto, was the son of a dyer who used cochineal dyes. His famous nickname even means dyer's boy or dyer's son. So perhaps it's very natural that he took the cochineal's vivid color and brought it into his paintings like St. George, St. Louis, and the Princess. However, in paint, carmine was far from the only crimson color. Cadmium red became very popular after it was commercially available in 1910. Unlike carmine paint, cadmium red is best known for its color fastness which are fancy words meaning it doesn't fade over time or when it's exposed to sunlight. So this is why Matisse's reds in Goldfish from 1912 are still so bright, and Van Gogh's roses from 1890 faded in the 17 years where it just hung in his mother's house. Take a look at these two versions of the bedroom, another of Van Gogh's famous paintings. The one on the left is how it looks today in a museum. The one on the right is a digital reconstruction of what it looked like when Van Gogh finished it. You can see how the walls completely changed from purple to blue, and the reds in the bedspread and the floor are now much duller and closer to brown. But even aged, red still packs a punch. The boldness of Van Gogh's bedspread, the allure of Matisse's goldfish, and Tintoretto's carmines are downright heady. Red is the fine wine of colors. It's one of life's little joys, but overwhelming in its abundance of meaning. Its passion leaps out at us and sweeps through us and leaves us breathless, but still wanting more. More romance and more power, more passion. And so we go out and search for it, and find it, and, and grab it, and hold it close. Just as close as we can. And that is the power of red. Thanks for watching today. This was a super fun video to make, and I hope to make some more soon. If you enjoyed it, drop a like down below, and tell me what color you would like to learn more about next. Subscribe to Lunestra Art to make sure you get to see those videos, or drop by Skillshare.com and look for Bethany Lindell's art and writing classes. My favorite right now is, what's all the fuss about color wheels, because color is fascinating. See you next time. Bye!